And I'm hungry. Now, take in mind these hamburgers are homemade. Thank Did you. Did you make them? Uh huh. Uh -huh. So, Tina, when do I get to meet the new guy? I thought he was supposed to be here today. Yeah, I don't know. He must have gotten hung up someplace. Mm. Oh, I am so hungry. <laughs> no, try these fries. They're excellent. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good stuff. Mmm. Hi, babe. We were just talking about you. Yeah. I saw what you were just. Let's go, Tina. Now. Um, these are my friends, Rita and Chris. This is Leo. Hey, Leo. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Let me Hi. get you a beer. We're leaving. Okay? Yeah, real nice to meet you too, Pat. What's up with him? He's just been really stressed out lately with his work. I mean, you guys know how it is. Anyway, um, I gotta go, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. What's wrong with me? I see you with another guy. He's not another guy, he's a cop. We work together, Leo. You, you humiliated me in front of all my friends. The minute the judge allowed the testimony by Baker, I knew we had this guy nailed. You and Chris did good work this time, right? Thanks, George. Hey, Tina, what Rita happened Donovan. to you? Uh, listen, I'm going to catch up with you, George. Give me a uh, Chinese chicken salad if the lettuce isn't too brown. Lettuce is always brown. Second choice? Yeah, look, uh, Tina. Rita, look, I'm kind of jammed today. Maybe we can talk later? You cannot tell me that you ran into a door or fell down. We both have been cops too long. It's really no big deal, OK? Wrong. A guy punches you out. That is a very big deal. Look, he just lost his temper. He's really not that way. He beat you up, Tina. Now, there's no excuse for that. Look, you don't understand, so just leave it alone, all right? I know what I'm doing. Rita, is Tina okay? Yeah, she's got a boyfriend that uses her for a punching bag. She's just fine. She's a cop, and she takes a beating from that clown? I don't understand that. I don't think she does either. Tina, 
Get car, away Tina. from me. It's over, Leo. Get in the car, Tina. Can you kill me, Tina? Get back in the car. Try. Just pull the trigger. I'll do it. Do it now. Can you? You can't leave me, Tina. <laughs> I can't let you leave me. Chris, what's up? What time is it? <sighs> I was having such a nightmare. Yeah, I wish this were a nightmare. I'm in Ocean Park. Tina Maxwell's been murdered. What? <sighs> you okay? He stole her life, that son of a bitch. She's never gonna get married. She'll never have kids. She loved him, and this is what he did to her. Okay, let's go get some coffee, okay? We're all finished up here. No, I wanna know, is this what love is? Is this what it does to you? We'll get him. It's not gonna bring her life back. How many of these have we seen, Chris? How many more are there gonna be? It's not going to stop. It won't stop. I told you what happened. I said I'll sign a statement. I'm tired. And Tina Maxwell is dead, and you killed her. It was an accident. Your friend liked rough sex. The rougher, the better. This time, things got out of hand. People don't die making love, Leo. You know what I think? I think you had a fight at your apartment. She went for a walk. You followed her, and you strangled her. Now, I followed her to talk it out, but things got intense. We had sex, rough. She wanted to push it to the limit. She pulled her gun. You hey, killed her, you hands bastard! Oh, get oh, your hands Let him go. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Come on. Come on. What he is doing in there, he's making himself a manslaughter defense. He's gonna cut oh, a deal. Oh, cool it, Rita, all right? Now, we don't say another word to him until his lawyer gets here. He walks on violations of his rights. You get that? But he, he... I know what he did. So let's not mess it up by going crazy on him, okay? Hell of a thing, losing an officer. The pop of the funeral hardly softens a blow. I know you and Tina were close, Rita. We were vice together under your command, Scotty. Tina thought the world of you, sir. So do I, even though you did take the easy way out and retire. Well, I had 50 years plus on the job, you could tell you. You're not even a double digits yet, am I right? Yeah. You look tired, sweetheart. I've been having these dreams. Nightmares, actually. First, they just happened once in a while, and now I'm having them all the time. It's the same dream over and over and over. Yeah, that happened to me. Just once. The girl's name was Jasmine. I still carry that one around. I think I read about that case. You must have been a rookie detective back then. She was, uh, she was a singer, wasn't she? Right. They said her voice was magic. I never heard it. She was dead the first time I saw her. She was beautiful even then. It was brutal. 
The killer had fixed up her body, put fresh makeup on her. Kind of displayed her so she'd look nice whenever she was found. She was gentle, caring. I always figured the killer was in love with her. Sounds like you know who it was, Scotty. Oh, my money was always on her husband. Warren Hayward. He was one tough guy. I never could get to him. Hey, Scotty. Yo, he's got to be talking about Jasmine. It's the only time he sits still for this long. Guilty, kid. You know me too well. See, most people, they carry a snapshot of their wife and kids. Scotty's got a snap of Jasmine. Guilty again. You know, she was the most important case I ever had. And I never solved it. I guess I kind of fell for it, too. Not nuts. Falling for a dead girl. <laughs> well, I still got a cardboard box that big full of evidence from the case. I'd like to take a look at that box, Scotty. She's really beautiful, Scotty. That she was, sweetheart. That she was. What do you got? Ah, all the evidence from Jasmine's murder. I guess Scotty put it on my desk early this morning. Left me a note. Rudy, here's Jasmine. I did all I could going fishing, Scotty. I guess I knew I was interested. Yeah. George? Hey, George. Make me smile, George. Tell me you are going for murder one on Leo Davis. I wish I could. Uh, plea bargaining? No, his sleaze ball attorney won't deal, so we're going to court. But the charge is manslaughter. Look, he'll do time. Yeah, he'll do time. What, maybe two or five years? It should make Tina's family feel so much better. We should be so proud of ourselves. Rita, it's not George's fault. You know what? It took Scotty 50 years to burn out on this job. Well, I'm not going to do it that long. I cannot do this one more day. The woman who kept Detective Scotty Adano awake for 50 years had found her way into my dreams, Jasmine. Her murder was one of the most sensational crimes that ever rocked Palm Beach, and her killer had never been caught. Now it seemed the mantle had been passed from Scotty to me. This was the mansion that Jasmine's husband, Warren Hayworth, built for her, a monument to her beauty. Jasmine's granddaughter inherited the house and her beauty. Miss Hayworth? Hi, I'm Sergeant Lance, Palm Beach Police. Could I talk to you for a minute about Jasmine and Warren Hayworth? You're a little late. They're both dead. Yes, I know. It's about her death. Jasmine's murder's ancient history before I was born. I don't understand why you're forcing your way in here to annoy me about something that happened such a long time ago. You must have lots of time on your hands. Well, I guess it would be a lot more annoying to answer these questions downtown, wouldn't it, Miss Hayworth? All right. But I don't appreciate being harassed in this way, and your superiors will hear about it. Why all the attitude, Miss Hayworth? I mean, doesn't it bother you that your grandmother's killer was never found? Why should it? I never even knew her. Did your grandfather or your father ever talk to you about Jasmine? I do remember when I was a kid, a cop used to come around and talk to my father about it. But he hasn't been around in years. My father said he was after the reward. I guess by now he's dead, too. No, he's still around. That's Detective Adano. What reward? 
My grandfather put a $1 million reward in trust for the person who solved Jasmine's murder. And that was when a million was real money. Obviously, it's never been claimed. Edgar, I want something cold to drink. I read that there was a big scandal involving Jasmine's death. It was nothing, really. Jasmine was a singer, and she was getting it on with her accompanist. That's all. Well, people here have always done that. Slept with whomever they want. I'm getting married myself in a few days, but it's certainly not going to affect my sex life. Lisa! Baby, I miss you so much! You know my caterer? Oh, but of course, we are girlfriends. <laughs> she is the first officer. I... No. It's all right, Solange. She knows that I am a cop. Oh, I am so relieved. I think this is another one of those under the cover things you do. Mm. Just don't arrest this sweet woman before the wedding. I have such goodies in store for her. Good. Nina, you. Oh, man, where have you been? Ah, I have been up to my neck in this stuff. You, it's fascinating. I can see exactly why Scotty got hooked now. It's Look, you amazing. have any idea how worried I've been? I just got back from your place. I went over there after you wouldn't return my calls or my pages. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I lost track of time. I was going to call you, but I was up all night with this stuff. She was in my dreams. Jasmine. Huh. Look at this. This is her right here. This is Jasmine. This is Victor Lozano, the piano player at the club. Look at the connection between the two of them. I could see it in their eyes. It's amazing. What they had was not casual, no. And it wasn't lust, it was, it was much more than that. It was the kind of stuff that most people just dream about. You, uh, you've been taking your caffeine intravenously again? Lance, my office. Just Lance. What's up, Lieutenant? Close the door, Rita. I just left the chief's office. He called me in because he just had a call from Catherine Hayworth's attorneys inquiring as to why one of my offices is bothering their client about a crime that happened 50 years ago. It's a homicide, Lieutenant. Homicide cases do not close until they are solved. You think you have to tell me that? I didn't have an answer for the chief's question because I had no idea what you were doing. And I felt foolish. I don't like feeling foolish. I didn't brief you. I should have followed procedure, and it won't happen again. Is that it? No, that is not it. You were absent without authorization for most of the day. Lorenzo had no idea where you were. You missed a court date following Donovan up. You are way out of line here, lady. I'm sorry. <sighs> no offense, Rita. But you need some rest. You're a little ragged around the edges. Take 10 days, sick time. Get some rest and recharge. Oh, I am fine, Lieutenant. Re I just haven't been sleeping that well. That is not a request. During that time, you're to see Dr. Neff for evaluations, and that is not a request either. You have an appointment at 3 o'clock this afternoon. I've never wanted to be anything but a cop. You know, since I was a little girl, that's... Uh... It's always been my dream. But, um, lately, I, I don't know, I, I feel like I don't know myself anymore. The dreams are endless. I feel like I am underwater and I can't reach the surface. All these dead people, and they are calling my name to help them. But I can't help them because it is too late.
I was afraid to go to sleep last night because I thought I would see Tina or my dad again. But it was Jasmine. She was calling my name and she was begging for my help. I found my daddy in the bathtub. He had all of his clothes on. I, I remember how creepy that made me feel. That he had all of his clothes on in the bathtub. He shot himself. <coughs> I remember trying to scream, and nothing would come out. Solving a 50-year-old murder case is not a hobby, it's a job. Besides, if the lieutenant knew about it, he'd be upset. Not if we solve it. Could you be reasonable one time? Just take a vacation, relax. Wait, you, you, you said we. You said we. Mm-hmm. Look. This is very important to me, Chris. I don't know why, but it is. I have to do this. If you don't want to help me, that's cool. I just thought that maybe... No, I don't want to help you, all right? It's crazy. It's nuts. It... Come on. So, what do you think? Am I going crazy? It certainly feels that way. You're exhausted from trying not to feel. Your mind shorts out your feelings, trying to protect you. You can't stand to feel scared because you're helpless when you're scared. You can't handle that fear, so you shut it down by losing yourself in your job. You use the work to give yourself a sense of control, of power. A cop is control. But then your friend Tina got killed. Now the fear rises up out of nowhere and starts to choke you. So you're trying to lose yourself and Jasmine. So what about the dreams? I mean, I was having those before I knew about Jasmine or before Tina died. You've been scared your whole life. The dreams are about that, about a loss of control, of helplessness, the same kind of helplessness and fear you felt when your father killed himself. You never want to feel that helpless again. It terrifies you. <laughs> so what now, you? Wave a magic wand that I'm fixed, or what? You're not broken. Just be willing to feel the feelings, Rita. Don't logicize them or stuff them, no matter how uncomfortable they make you. Because if you don't let yourself feel the bad stuff, pretty soon you won't be able to feel the good stuff. You'll just be numb. That's a cold, lonely place to be. Maria. Mr. Lozano? Yes? Hi, I'm Detective Lance. I spoke with you on the phone. Oh, yes. Pleasure to meet you. Victor Lozano. <laughs> By the way, you uh, were not specific as to why you wanted to see me. Uh, I would like to speak with you for a few minutes about Jasmine Hayworth. Jasmine? Oh, of course. Uh, why don't we go sit in the garden? We can talk there. Okay. Bye. Jasmine's been gone for so long, and yet, to me, it doesn't seem that long at all. I could see that the two of you shared something very special. I could see that in the pictures. Yes. Mr. Lozano, I, I thought that if anybody could shed some light on what happened to Jasmine, it would be you. You're very good. You're very observant about other people's emotions, but otherwise you're wrong because I don't know who killed her. And if I did, I certainly would have spoken out a long time ago. Tell me about her. Jasmine. Oh. She was a magnificent woman. Beautiful, so loving. God, I've missed her every day that she's been gone. Think about losing the most important person in your life not being able to share that loss and the pain. Can you think of anybody who might have wanted her dead? Her husband. 
They had a very bad marriage. She secretly had filed for divorce. And he was angry when she told him? No. Jasmine did not tell Hayworth. Martin Weston did. He was the family lawyer. Their watchdog, and you're absolutely right. Hayworth was very angry. He was also intensely jealous. Do you know that he once told her that he'd rather see her dead than have her be happy with another man? You know, the investigating detective always suspected Hayworth, but he couldn't prove it. Well, let's face it. Money is a powerful tool, Detective Lance. Weston was Hayworth's ally. I mean, he had to keep the silence. Is Martin Weston still alive? No, he's not. However, the practice of law is like bad genetics. It passes from father to son to grandson. The Martin Weston office is still open for business. He was a small man. It's about five, six or so. Tough old buzzard. Break your back if you crossed him. But commit murder? Not the Warren Hayworth I knew about. What if we were talking about an unfaithful wife? Oh, especially not her. Old Hayworth was a cold man, but Jasmine was the one thing in his life that he loved. Mr. Weston, did your father or grandfather ever mention how Hayworth reacted when Jasmine filed for divorce? Divorce? She never filed for divorce. Are you sure? My grandfather was Hayworth's lawyer. He knew everything that went on in that marriage. Maybe she had another lawyer file the papers. Detective Lance, it just wouldn't have happened. Jasmine died a long time ago. Why stir this all up now? Everything contradicts everything, and everybody has a different story. Well, everybody's relying on what they heard from somebody else except Lozano, and he's getting up there in age. Maybe his mind's slipping. No, he's sharp. And he's very specific about his details. Well, maybe he's lying. I mean, he's the only one that was alive back then, so he's the only one that's got something to gain or lose. Look out! Think about this. You're fatigued, your emotions are raw from what you have to deal with on the job. You're in a vulnerable state. What if all this stuff is some kind of spiritual thing? I mean, what, you getting vibrations from all this stuff? Vibrations were not driving that van tonight, Chris. The answer has got to be in here somewhere. It's something that I have missed or that Scotty missed. What about motive? What about motive? Right. Lozano was the only one that could have a reason to want you dead. Right? Maybe he killed Jasmine and he wants you off the case. This seems all wrong. What if it had nothing to do with love? Yeah. Nothing to do with murder. Okay. So what else is there? Money. Money. So maybe it's in the Hayworth will. Maybe that's where the answer is. What are you doing? I'm saving you from yourself. All right, you got to get some sleep. You can look at this tomorrow. Sleep is fine. <laughs> it's the stupid dreams that I'm worried about. Look, I really appreciate you hanging in there with me. You're getting me all misty-eyed. <laughs> All right, I will be in here in case the cat with the van comes back. You go and get some sleep. OK. All right. Just take it. See you. Good night. Good night. <sighs> you got a blanket? about Jasmine. I was in her coffin. 
It's okay. It's okay. Morning, George. Lorenzo, did Rita come in today? No, she's taking a couple of weeks personal time. Is she okay? I mean, you did talk her out of quitting, right? Well, we haven't actually talked about it, but I wouldn't clean out a locker just yet. Who's the, uh, who's the lucky girl that kept you up late last night? Oh, come on, George. You expect me to kiss and tell? All right. All right. Who was girls, Donovan? Identical twins, Inga and Kirsten. Statuesque would not do these girls justice. I mean, they were... You know what, though? I felt kind of like a piece of lunch meat. That ever happened to you? No. Yeah. Me either. Kidding. Ah! You got a main streak in you, Lorenzo. A really nasty main streak. Wow, this is old. What are we looking for? I'm trying to find something that everybody else missed. I'm trying to find out who killed her. And she was last seen alive around 11 p.m. She was found dead the next morning at 6 a.m. And the coroner guessed the time of death around 2. Not very exact procedure back then, huh? Let's just say that it was. It was four hours between the time she was killed and the time that she was found. OK. There was no blood where she was found. Killed somewhere else, dumped at Doc Weller Point. No, she wasn't dumped. Whoever killed her, they took the time. They cleaned her up a little bit. They put some fresh makeup on. Bizarre. It's the stuff urban legends are made of. So what do you make of those wounds? Nothing peculiar about the blade. Kind of a slashing attack, a couple of puncture wounds. And maybe an attacker who wasn't very big. Why? Shallow wounds. Also, if the person were small, they'd have a hard time moving the body alone. Maybe have to work something out, which would eat up the four hours, not to mention that cover girl job. Moving a dead body isn't easy. So maybe we're talking about a woman. We're a small man. And look at the location of these wounds. Primarily on the hands, mm -hmm. upper chest, arm. Victim was in a defensive posture. So maybe she was trying to protect her face. Mm -hmm. Whoever killed her might have been trying to disfigure her, and they might have been jealous of her beauty. Or enraged because of it. Either way, your basic crime of passion. These small cuts, punctures, random. Bled some, not very serious, not much more than bad scratches. Mostly on her back. Could be, um, just guessing. Mm. Some kind of S&M thing. Why the interest, Rita? Seems to me you have enough to do with fresh murders without digging up old ones. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a long story, Noriko. When I find out the ending, I will let you know. Thanks a lot. Sure. Anytime.
What's the matter, honey? Wow. Can't get you interested? Not up to it? Look, I've got something on my mind. <sighs> You're not going to be this way after we're married, are you? What does it matter? Don't you understand sex is not the most important thing in the world? <sighs> not in your world, that's for sure. So what's it all about, Alfred? Hmm? You'd open up, it's me, Chris. Look who I found outside your door. I dropped by to say hi, see how you were. I happened to look across the street. I see a pair of binoculars sticking out of a car, and behind the binoculars, Solange. Solange. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Does he know? Know, know what? what? About your guest? Earlier? I followed Alex West on here, Rita. He, uh, after all, he's Carson Hayward's fiance. He went around the building to the back door, maybe? A discreet lover is so hard to find these days. He was discreet, all right? He was in and out of here before I could see who it was. So what were you doing following him, Solange? Good question. Well, um, if I say this, it will stay with us, we? Oui? Sure. I am catering the Hayward Western wedding, as you know, and um, it is the biggest society event of the year. And also, I am providing certain photographs to a Tabloid newspaper. Unknown to Miss Hayworth or Mr. Weston, I'm sure. Of course. Call me incognito paparazzo. <laughs> Call you out of work if he finds out about it, Solange. So, anyway, I sell these pictures to the supermarket rag, and then I think, what would they pay for scandal? Hmm? <laughs> and I would love it, too. And then I see you, Rita, talking to a castle on this beautiful homicide detective, and I think, maybe. It was you following me, wasn't it? The Palomino pantsuit. Mm. You look so butch, Rita. I love you in that. Thank you, Solange. Anyway, I follow you. I follow Alex Weston. Did you find any scandal? Um, no, I did not get it. But you must not say a word to Alex, or he will follow me just like that. Hey, I thought you were working for Catherine. Oh, I am. She has the money, but he handles the business. He clips the coupons, writes the checks. All she has to worry about is her libido. Mm. Mm. Au revoir. Bye. Binoculars, Slash. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I appreciate it. OK. Oh, come on, Rita. You promised if Lieutenant Hudson's you look terrific. Thank you. I slept like a log last night. I did not have any dreams. I woke up feeling sort of very peaceful, like the whole storm had passed. I'm back. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, you know, that's outstanding. Because I just got off the phone with a rental agency from Jupiter, all right? Now, they rented a gray van to one Alex Weston the day before yesterday. I say it's time we go ring him up. OK. I would like to stop on the way, though, because I think I figured out why Alex Weston tried to kill me. Is this supposed to mean something to me? I never read it. I wouldn't know what it said if I did. Towards the end, there are several codicils. You talk like Alex. There are amendments, additional provisions. One of them funds the reward trust. There's a time limit on the reward. The time's almost up. If Jasmine's murder isn't solved in 50 years, a million bucks in all its accumulated interest goes back into the Hayward Bank. So? Fine, I guess. You can't be too skinny or too rich. What's your point? The money is a life raft. Alex has complete control over the Hayworth fortune. I think he was embezzling, and he planned on using the return of the reward fund to cover it up. <sighs> Alex wouldn't have the nerve. Can you prove this? No, no, but a bank account is easy to arrange. I'm sure your bank can do it. And if I don't want to? Well, that's up to you, Miss Hayworth. You can write the money off as a gift if you would like. But he is also guilty of interfering with a murder investigation. And don't leave out attempted murder. He tried to run my partner down with a van. Where is he? Top of the stairs to the right. All right, stay here. Put the gun down, Mr. Weston. Nice and slow, Alex. <sighs> Alex, you are so anal. Stand up. Oh, you got 
reckless, impotent. Why did you do that? Because you disgust me. Everything you are, everything you do. Because you have money, you think you can do whatever you like and to hell with everyone else. You know, my family's been indentured to the Hayworth money for 60 years. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Gee, forget about the toasters. You bag them, you tag them. You're under arrest, Mr. Weston. You have the right to remain silent. You're gonna make some convict a great wife, Alex. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot <laughs> afford one, one will be appointed to you. Are you sure about this? Yes, I'm sure. This is where Jasmine was murdered. You know the small scratches and wounds on her face? Yeah. It's from the rose thorns. Victor, I've come for the other glove, Victor. How did you know? I don't know. I just had a feeling. Oh, God. We were so young. So much in love, there we were, running away to be together. You know, they had a child, a young boy. And Jasmine was leaving him for me. Against my wishes, she went back home. She wanted to see her son one last time. And then her husband, Hayworth, he was there. He caught up with her. He, he beat her up, almost senseless. So she called me at the club. She told me that she wasn't going to leave with me. I don't know why she came here because we were supposed to meet back at the club. She was so afraid, crying. She was hysterical. I don't know how it happened. I know it just did. Came home late. Jasmine was gone. And so was Maria. Poor Maria, she lost all sense of reality that day. I don't think she knew what she was doing. I mean, to this day, I don't think she knows what she did. It was you who moved the body, wasn't it, Victor? It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I wiped away the blood, and, and I, I used a little makeup. I, I didn't think she should be seen like that, remembered in such ugliness. And then I said, I'm going to keep one of the gloves. I had to have something. And now, God, I feel so guilty. I mean, look what I made Maria do. Now she's going to be punished for something that I caused. Victor, I don't think that's going to happen, Victor. I think justice was done a long time ago. 